So Dan, this is so exciting to actually have a series focused on what you can do in your home to, you know, well, I think two things, to lower the, your running costs and lower your CO2 output. I'm genuinely excited because I think this is a subject that people are more and more interested in. They're, how can I actually lower the carbon emissions at, at my house? And actually, it's quite a complicated subject. You kind of need to talk about it as a whole, you know, how you insulate your property, how you heat your property, when and where you use your, your energy as well. Because I think most people will be looking at their boiler going, actually, maybe this is the last boiler I'll have. Yes. And it might have a year left, it might have five years left, it might have 10 years left. But they'll be thinking now, how do I get the next technology in to replace that. Let's get on with it. Get out there and film I can't, it. I, I can't wait to report back. Brilliant. Recent decades have taught us that the newest technologies are almost unstoppable. In the rush of progress away from fossil fuels towards sustainable technologies, we mustn't forget the most important energy of all, energy efficiency. It can seem like quite a complicated topic and I wonder if that's where part of the problem is. Shouldn't we make, be making this a bit easier for homeowners to say I, I do want to move past my gas boiler, where do I begin? And the principle of, of any house is the cheapest energy that you're going to have is the energy you don't use. So if you can um, make your home as airtight as possible then you're not going to lose heat. So I would always say, if you're choosing stuff to do, it would be insulation before installation. Most of us have cavities, fill it with something. Whatever you can do to make your walls as efficient as possible. Actually understanding where and how you use your energy is, is a key aspect. And in terms of heat, that means what temperature are you, are you aiming for? Where are you doing it? And what times are you doing it? So to set a full set of heating controls, that's a thermostat where you set the, the temperature. It's a timer to tell you when it comes on and when it comes off, or a programmer which tells you the days or calendar months that you're gonna use your heating. And controls in the system radiator valves, thermostatic radiator valves. So that's a full set of controls. And if you haven't got a full set of controls, then I would heartily recommend that you do. If you think back to four years ago, around 9% of the energy tariffs that were out there were classified as green. Today, that's more than half. So there's just been a huge explosion of options for consumers who care about renewable energy and sustainability when it comes to their energy choices, they can actually choose to have their electricity supplied from a renewable source. Uh, so we, we've come a long way very, very quickly. You can get an energy tariff from a provider that owns a wind farm, owns a solar farm, generates electricity from that, puts it through the pipes and puts it into your home. Bingo. You, you know, you, you are basically funding renewable energy by taking that tariff. Whatever your eventual choice, when it comes to heating, hot water and power, if you want to take control, there are lots of options. Can you tell us about you know, why we should get a, a Tardo smart thermostat? Tardo's smart thermostat is a, is, a, is a device which connects to your heating system, to your gas boiler. It works on any home um, and will allow you to control your heating via the mobile app. And then what that does is it allows you to then set a schedule, set a temperature, or call for heat to that particular radiator. And we've got real nice peace of mind that we're warm and comfortable, but we're not heating the other 10 radiators in our home at full power. People don't want to compromise energy saving for actually their comfort. And this has got the beauty of both worlds. What about wind power in a domestic setting, in a street like this? Would it work aesthetically? And actually, are you going to generate enough energy to justify its installation. 
we have our reservations, but what if you could part own a wind farm? So what Ripple does is we enable people to own a tiny part of a large scale wind farm and have the green low cost electricity that it generates supplied to their homes via the grid by our utility partner. So we're not a supplier ourselves, we um, make it all happen for our customers. So from December, our customers will be supplied by their very own wind farm that will then get them a discount on their electricity bill because they are owning what is the, now the UK's cheapest source of electricity. In five years time or 10 years time, we, we see the world being quite different. Uh, a fully charged world, if you like, homes being very different. Maybe they've got an electric vehicle parked outside. Maybe they've got a heat pump, other technologies as well. Yeah, zero, zero carbon energy homes um, are very much within our reach now. If you drive around the UK, you won't have to wait long to see roof mounted solar panels. Installation of solar PV surged in the UK with the advent of the feed-in tariff. While the subsidies have dissipated, for now at least, solar still makes a lot of sense. Our audience are a bit geeky. I can say that because I am as well. I'm kind of fascinated by apps and technology integration. So I'm just wondering how solar PV, solar thermal, these things come together and, and can they actually get more, more efficient and more easy to use? Yeah, I mean, I think the one app to rule them all is, is what, we're, <laughs> what we're all looking for, isn't it? So um, we work with customers who are installing heat pumps and solar PV and solar thermal and batteries. And um, we really do need those all to work together. We, have, we are seeing an increasing number of, of apps coming along. My Energy is a really, really good one that will start to tie these things together so that we can control where the PV power goes, when the heat pump turns on, when the solar thermal um, is, is going to be sort of get m the most use out of it really. One app to rule them all. I think it's, I, can, I can almost feel Robert getting quite excited about the prospect of that. However you're generating your power, it makes sense to consider storing that energy when it's cheap and self-consuming that stored energy when energy from the grid is more expensive. How does vehicle to grid work? In its most simple terms, it's a car that can um, take energy from the battery and put it back on the grid. So it's a two-way process. So all electric vehicles can take energy from the grid and charge up their battery to use. Vehicle to grid, a special kind of you know, system that will allow the car to put the energy back on the grid again. So from a personal perspective, it's reducing your bills and it's reducing your impact uh, on the grid because you're not drawing power when you're running your home ultimately um, from the car, but also to help the grid. So if, uh, if we have a vehicle to grid fleet out there of you know, thousands and thousands of vehicles in the future, we'll be able to significantly reduce that peak by, uh, by using the energy that's stored in those vehicles rather than burning fossil fuels. Heat pumps are a proven technology that are commonplace in Europe already and they are destined to play a huge role in how we heat our homes. Heat pumps are widely seen as a really important future technology, not just for the UK but around the world as a means of getting heat because they can run on renewable and low carbon electricity um, and because they take a, a huge proportion of the heat that they actually put into a house or a building from the environment. That means that they can be naturally low carbon, um, sustainable and renewable, all of the good things. If we want to get to our net zero goals by 2050, so that as a country we've got the target to get to net zero by 2050, to do that we've got to replace all of that oil and gas heating with something else. All of these millions of different heating systems have to be replaced. We know that heat pumps are a key option to do that. What a heat pump does is it uses electricity to move heat from the environment, so from the air in the case of air source heat pumps or from the ground in the case of ground source heat pumps or in, potentially in the case of water source heat pumps from rivers and lakes and streams. It moves the heat from the environment um, into a building so it can be used for hot water um, or for heating. I'm really excited about this project. Can you tell us a bit more about what you're doing here, Nigel? Yeah, I mean, this has been a project over the last couple of years to effectively look after seven blocks here in the city centre, but also at the same time looking at how we can address the zero carbon agenda. The solution being a ground source heat pump, okay. which is on an open loop, which is the first time on this scale. So what technology have we got on this site? You've got what they call a shoebox, the Kenza shoebox, which does the transferring. You've got the Sunamp battery, which is the storage. It's unobtrusive, 
and it works, and that's the bottom line. So there's nothing more powerful than a good idea whose time has come. And Indeed. what better example of seeing Sunamp in these tower blocks? We fitted out all 364 units. I've got a Kenza a ground source heat pump and a, and a unique heat battery in every single apartment, providing all the hot water needs. We've uh, lab tested this to, for 42,000 cycles before we switched it off. Okay, so in, year, in years? That is equivalent of 55 years, uh, twice a day. So okay. in, in cylinder parlance, you'd heat it up twice a day in the morning, once in the evening, so 55 years at twice a day. So virtually zero degradation. Wow. Presumably this could work in almost any type of property, couldn't it? it, it exactly, and we're, and we're proving it, it can. So the mixture tank really does work across the whole plethora of property types that are available in the UK and around the world. I guess one of the key questions will be for people is, is how big is it, how easy yeah. is it to, to install? It's the same size footprint with the same plumbing connections, the same power connections, and it's designed to be a complete straight swap for a regular hot water tank. The mixture tank has a kind of a special trick up its sleeve in that we start heating the tank from the top down. Right. So it behaves a bit like the battery charging bar on the phone. So if the tank's 20% full, we know that there's 80% of the tank full of cold water that's ready to be topped up, the temperature increased. Most of our audience members know about the Zappi, of course, many of them own it, but you do lots of other products for the homes and you've got more ambitions in that area as well. Yeah, so we've got the Zappi, which yeah. loads of people know about and it gets all the hype. We've got the Eddy, which is our power diverter to hot water and storage heating. It's actually a perfect solution if you cannot afford a battery. You know, so if you've got solar panels in the home and you're not thinking that you want to invest in a battery just yet, get an eddy because the actual money that you save on your utility bills from heating your water and heating your home is around it averages about 250 pounds a year and you can really then start to see whether wow, okay. you've got surplus energy after that to invest in a battery um, so basically what the eddy does is just tries to heat the home as effectively as possible either through an immersion underfloor heating towel rail okay. and it reads the import and export of the building and if it senses that there's any export it'll divert it to something more useful we see you know, EV charging, domestic heating, the electrification of heat being such a huge thing. You can't do one without the other. You have to try and think about the whole home. Quite often when we talk about air source heat pumps, we talk about newer properties. But what about old homes? Can it, can it work in old homes? Yes, it can easily heat our old home. It's to do with how much energy you need to heat that old home. So if you've got a boiler um, that's 12, 13 kilowatt, then uh, an aerosol seat pump like this one can produce 12, 13 kilowatt and it, it will be able to heat your home. I think the key thing to remember is if you have an old home, the right thing to do is actually try and insulate it as best as possible first and then, then look at a, the heating source. I can see a lot of homes in the future with a, a battery on the driveway in their car, with a, a, an air source heat pump and with a clean energy tariff uh, and uh, doing all the work basically. Definitely. Ground source heat pumps that we do can go into um, any property really, right, can okay. he heat anything at all. Anything that can maintain the heat loss, okay. yeah, you can, you can fit a ground source to. What we do is we start with the property, okay. see how much energy the property needs, and then we look at what size heat pump we need and how much ground or space available we've got, and then we decide on, decide on a, what type of ground we're in, how we're going to harness the heat from the ground. A lot of people that come to us literally don't know where to start, so it is like, what do I do? I want a ground source. And the first thing we always start with is how well insulated is your property? Okay. What are we heating? Once we understand what we're heating, then we can determine how much, what size heat pump we need and how much energy need we need from the ground. And then if you've got that ground available. I don't think there's any risk of the grid suddenly falling over because we've added some more heat pumps because it's got to be large, a part of a, a bigger programme looking forward, part of a, a wider strategy about electrification. The world as it is today, fossil fuels remain cheaper because the government's just ignored the fact that there's a climate change price associated with them. It's, it's like not paying to dispose of your rubbish and just chucking it out the window. Eventually there's gonna be a huge pile of rubbish there, right? That you know is an issue. You can't see the climate change emissions, but every unit of gas that gets burned in the UK, we're just chucking that waste out of our gas boiler, out of our flues, and the same with oil boilers. We just don't value it. So in summary then, heat pumps are the way forward? 
Totally, and it's not just me that thinks that. The International Energy Agency and the Commission on Climate Change also say the same thing. So the key to Herschel infrared heating is, is really the way in which it heats. So unlike your conventional heating systems, which more, more often than not heat the air, Herschel infrared panels, they heat the thermal mass of the room. So by thermal mass, I mean the walls, the floors, the ceilings, any objects in the room and us actually. So they'll heat us directly as people as well. So that, that heat uh, from the panels is stored in the thermal mass and then radiates out back and heats the room like that, which makes it a very efficient way of heating. Really simple to install, you could do without an electrician. All you need to do is mount the very easy, it's called an easy fix bracket on the wall, screw it in, slot the heater on, and then plug it in, pair it with either a, a wireless plug-in thermostat, um, a battery operated thermostat, and then away you go. I am so excited about this technology, I could barely sleep last night, which says a lot about me, I'm a bit of a heat geek. So yeah, our zero emission boiler, we call it a ZEB, um, is basically, it's a plug and play replacement for a fossil fuel boiler. And what the ZEB's actually doing is it's got about 40 kilowatt hours of really high density thermal storage on board. And that's absolutely critical because it enables us to separate your consumption of heating within the house from the way you consume electricity. So what we're able to do is mimic the performance of your gas boiler give you the same high temperature heating without changing your house and then also consume electricity when the, the electricity is greenest and cheapest. We are moving from a world where we have, we had loads of control on the generation side and we're getting less because we, you know, renewables will generate when, when, when you know, the sun and the wind is available. So what we need to be able to do is change the way we flexibly consume that electricity to one, make the, drive the cost down for, for consumers, but also as an energy system to try and reduce the costs of, of that energy transition. Uh, basically our heat battery store takes low cost off-peak electricity, we store it as heat, uh, it's in a super insulated vessel so you can keep the heat for days and actually weeks. And the idea is that it provides a high power high temperature water to replace your boiler. You know, it's got very few moving parts, it's got a pump in it. We think the maintenance will be actually less than a gas boiler. Well, that'll be music to people's ears who live off grid, I think, because at the moment the options are, you know, you could go to air source or ground source, and this offers something a bit different, doesn't it? We want a zero carbon society, not a low energy society. And people often conflate the two points together, but actually the aim is zero carbon. And we've got to be really clear about that that's what we're after and actually flexibility is as valuable as efficiency. How much energy can it store and, and perhaps compare that to something else so people get, get an idea okay. of what it, that it means? It stores 100 kilowatt hours of usable okay. heat which is seven Tesla power walls. Wow okay. And if you, I, I know this because I got a quote recently, if you put seven Tesla power walls in it'll probably cost you about 60 or 70 grand. The ubiquity, flexibility and compatibility of electricity is what gives it its killer advantage over fossil fuels. And now with an array of different options from heat pumps to zero emission boilers, the Swiss army knife of electricity can finally start to cut our carbon emissions. We all have to go on a journey towards zero carbon homes and it will take people some time. These technologies start off being quite expensive, we understand that, but over time they get cheaper and that's because pioneers and early adopters, the people who watch Fully Charged on a regular basis, start to invest in these technologies. Your investment in that will mean more than decarbonising your own home, it will help other people to access these technologies in the future.